During the Spring Festival of 2004, a time when tens of millions of people travel across the country to spend the New Year holiday with their families. Four students, Tang Xueli, Yang Kaihong, Gong Bo and Shao Rui Jie, who were studying in the biotechnology department of Yunnan University, would make the fatal decision to return to campus early, a few weeks before the start of the new semester. Over a period of three days, they would be murdered by one of their fellow students. The killer student would flee and become the most wanted man in China. The killer student's name was Ma Jiajue. Ma Jiajue was born in Guangxi, special autonomous region in the south of China. Bordered by Vietnam to the south and flanked by the provinces of Yunnan to the west and Guangdong to the east, Guangxi is a popular tourist destination for both Chinese and foreign visitors. Even in the face of the modernization, industrialization and development seen across much of China, Guangxi has maintained much of its rural, natural beauty. With their easily recognizable limestone karst landscapes, the city of Guilin and town of Yangshuo are the region's biggest attractions for visitors. Yangshuo in particular has a long history of attracting foreign rock climbers who want to tackle the unique rock formations. The region's capital, Nanning, is now a modern developed city with a population of close to 10 million people. Outside of these, however, the rest of Guangxi lags behind other provinces economically. Although today things have improved greatly, 20 years ago poverty was a major issue for people who lived in the less well-known areas. Ma Jiajue would grow up in one such area of Binyang County to the east of Nanning. His hometown Binzhou is one of the oldest towns in Guangxi. Today, the area has seen a lot of investment in its development but 20 years ago it was a place people only saw when they were passing through to go on to more attractive destinations. For years after his crimes Binzhou would only be known as the birthplace of the most notorious student to study at Yunnan University. Born on the 4th of May 2004, Ma Jiajue was one of four siblings. His parents worked as farmers during the day and would iron clothes in their home for a company at night. In poor families in China at that time their only chance to escape poverty would be through their children. Parents would hope that one of their kids would show promise in school and would save most of their money for university tuition fees in the future. Ma Jiajue would be a ray of hope for his parents. He would prove to be an outstanding student, the top pupil in his primary school. His teacher at the time would remember him as being excellent at math but struggling with Chinese language. In small village primary schools these would often be the only subjects taught. His struggles with Mandarin could be put down to his situation. People from villages will mostly speak their local dialect. The older generations will not be that comfortable speaking the standard Mandarin and it would not be used at home. However, Ma Jiajue was also said to be a quiet child, he didn't make friends in school. He didn't play with other children from the village or his siblings. Instead he would sit at home by himself not making much effort to talk to others. In that respect he took after his father who was also a man of few words. Working the farm during the day and ironing at night left him with little free time to spend with his children. His mother just saw her son as a sensible, well-behaved child who gave her fewer problems than his siblings. His mother would proudly say in an interview that he was the only one of her children she never had to be to make him behave. Other people in the village would have a similar opinion of the boy. Quiet, polite, and sensible. One of his neighbors would tell a story of a then seven-year-old Ma Jiajue borrowing a screwdriver from him. When it was returned the neighbor noticed it was brand new. Ma Jiajue had lost the one he borrowed so he used what little pocket money he had to buy a replacement. Walking 10 kilometers to a shop to get it. At only five years old Ma Jiajue could see the struggles of his parents. He had a dream of becoming a scientist to help him. One night at dinner, when looking over the meager food his parents had worked hard to provide, he would tell his father, One day I want to help you eat better than this. The words would bring tears to the eyes of his father. His academic performance in primary school got him entry into one of the best middle schools in the county. There he would continue to be a standout student. His proud parents would decorate the walls of their home with the numerous certificates he received. He would get the respect of his peers for his success but he didn't make friends. Instead he would spend time alone reading kung fu novels, isolating himself from other students. 
The fact he was doing so well at school cast a veil over any problems he was having. His parents either couldn't see, or didn't see their son starting to have issues. It wouldn't be until years later that his father would find a diary written by Ma Jiajue when he was 15. In the diary Ma Jiajue would describe how he wanted to kill his grandmother after an argument over what to watch on TV. He would also describe wanting to stab his father to death. Ma Jiajue had one uncle who he felt could understand him better than his parents. This uncle had a higher level of education so the boy turned to him for help. He felt his parents only focused on his schoolwork. Ma Jiajue wanted advice on how to make friends. His uncle would offer some generic advice but would also focus their conversations on how he was doing at school. Once again Ma Jiajue would graduate into one of the better schools in the county. However in high school he was no longer a standout student. In areas like this it was common for students who didn't show the potential to go on to university to drop out of education. The respect his grades got him in primary and middle school was gone and making friends was still something he had trouble with. He would receive the distinction of coming in second place in a national physics competition. It would be in the vital third and final year of high school that his performance would dip. For the first time in his education Ma Jiajue was failing, and this was at the worst possible time. For students in China their entire education leads to the notorious Gaokao, or college entrance exam. The third year of high school in particular consists of constant testing and going over previous tests. The pressure placed on the students from both teachers and parents is immense. This one test can decide the future of people taking it. Students will, in some cases, be in classrooms from 7 o'clock in the morning until 11 o'clock at night. With his performance faltering, Ma Jiajue took a drastic step and ran away from school. He hadn't been going home often, preferring to stay in his school dormitory alone. He would be found in Guigang City in the southeast of Guangxi about 100 kilometers from Nanning. The only reason he gave for his running away was that he wanted to see the sea. He thought the city had a port. Unfortunately he was wrong and didn't get what he desired. Being returned to school he would be disciplined for his actions. However he would respond well. He threw everything into his studies making up for his poor performance and running away. The hard work paid off and he would receive a score of 697 out of a possible 750 in the Gaokao, more than enough for him to have his pick of the best universities in the country. For parents in China their dream is for their children to get into Tsinghua or Beida University, the Chinese equivalent of Oxford or Cambridge. It is almost a guarantee of a job with a high salary. However the higher reputation comes with higher tuition fees. Ma Jiajue being fully aware of his parents' financial situation would choose to study at Yunnan University in the Department of Biotechnology. The family would use their life savings of 6,000 RMB, just short of 900 US dollars today to pay the tuition fees. Ma Jiajue would not only be the first in his family but the first in his village to go to university. Yunnan neighbor Guangxi, so for a student like Ma Jiajue, who had never left his home province before, there would be some comfort in knowing they weren't going to be far from their home and family. And while Yunnan University didn't have the same level of reputation as the major universities it was still considered one of the best in the country. The province itself can attract people as much as the university. People go to Yunnan for the environment, mountain scenery and the excellent hiking the region provides. Moving to a province like Yunnan wouldn't provide as much culture shock to a person with the background of Ma Jiajue as a major city like Beijing or Shanghai. In recent years students from poor backgrounds have spoken about the challenges they face when moving into higher education. They will be meeting people from all around the country who have very different social or economic status. This leaves those students feeling inferior and looked down on by their more cosmopolitan or wealthy peers. They will find it hard to socialize and build friendships with other students, feeling they have nothing in common with those they consider above them. This often leads to these students isolating themselves and without the familiar feeling being with their families gives them they can often fall into depression. Once again making friends would be an issue for Ma Jiajue. He hadn't been able to develop social skills in his earlier schooling and would continue to find it difficult at university. He turned to his uncle once again for advice but again would get little help. He would at least attempt to make friends with other students now, but often left them with a bad impression. He had a short temper. When playing basketball if he was bumped into or fault he would explode at the other players in anger. On the campus he was said to have a gloomy aura around him. People felt uncomfortable in his presence and would try to avoid him if they saw him. 
During his time at university he would never ask his family to send him money. What little they could afford to send was always unsolicited. Instead he would pay his own way, working part-time jobs to get by. This meant he often didn't go home during the holidays preferring to stay in his dormitory. He didn't spend money on buying new clothes. He wore flip-flops rather than shoes, and always took cold showers. When going to the canteen he tried to be the last to eat so that other students couldn't see he didn't have the money to afford meat. Because of his frugality, he would manage to get enough money together to buy a second-hand computer. And it would be the internet he would use to help him learn how to become more popular. He tried to use humor to improve his image on campus. Seeing how other students who made people laugh always had friends around them, he decided to try and imitate that. He went online to find jokes to memorize, but his lack of experience in social interaction and way of talking made his attempts at humor clumsy and awkward. With each failed attempt, he became increasingly paranoid. On the few occasions he did manage to make people laugh, he convinced himself that the people were mocking him. When that failed he would try to become the tough guy. But this was even less successful. With him already having a short temper and giving off a gloomy atmosphere, trying to be a badass left others feeling more uncomfortable around him. Nothing he tried had worked so he retreated into his dorm room, spending most of his free time surfing the internet. But also in room 317 was the one person Ma Jiajue viewed as a friend. The only real friend he had ever had in his life. Dorm rooms in Chinese schools are usually very basic affairs. Students sleep on bonds. In university there will generally be four people to room. Each occupant will have their own locker for their belongings and an area under their bunk for a desk. This doesn't leave much space for the roommates and there isn't much privacy. This can cause problems between students living in such close proximity, but the majority of the time the students make the best of it. Often they will form strong bonds and remain friends long after graduating and moving on in their life. Ma Jiajue felt he had finally found a bond with someone. Someone he would consider his best and most trusted friend, his roommate Shao Ruijie. It is difficult to find any solid information on the background of Shao Ruijie. There is plenty of rumor, gossip and speculation online but little fact. What is known for certain is that he grew up in similar circumstances as Ma Jiajue. Shao Ruijie was also a native of Guangxi province, growing up in Zhongwu village in Wuzhou city in the east of Guangxi. He too came from a poor family, his parents had taken out a loan of 7,000 RMB for his tuition fees and another further loan of 10,000. A huge amount of money for people in their circumstances. One way in which the two friends would differ greatly was in their social habits. Shao Ruijie didn't have the same difficulties as Ma Jiajue when it came to making friends. While Ma Jiajue would spend most of his time in the dorm room on his computer, Shao Ruijie would often be out late, hanging out in other students' rooms. The more sociable personality of Shao Ruijie helped Ma Jiajue build some kind of relationship with other students by association. Among them would be Gong Bo, Yang Kaihong, and Tang Xueli. Tang Xueli was a native of Yunnan province, growing up in Chongren village in the autonomous prefecture of Nujiang, Lisu, close to Tibet. He too came from a poor family and had four younger siblings. In 2004 he was planning to go on to graduate school to further his education. However on returning home that spring festival he saw the way his family was struggling financially. His younger brother was also in college, studying at Yunnan Normal University and his other siblings were hoping to follow in their big brother's footsteps and enter higher education. Tang Xueli would change his mind about his future and decided to finish his education on graduation. He wanted to start working so he would be able to help his family by contributing financially. Like Tang Xueli, Yang Kaihong was a native of Yunnan. He grew up in Hong Tangzi village, Kaiyuan city and was a member of the Miao ethnic minority group. Although today a lot has been done to improve the conditions of members of minority groups in China, 20 years ago groups like the Miao would experience some of the most impoverished conditions in the country. For a member of the Miao community to get into a university at that time was a great achievement. Yang Kaihong was one of, if not the poorest student in his schools during his youth. Because he showed great promise his schools would help subsidize his education. Other students would help him by sharing their pocket money with him and providing him with clothes and shoes. As with Shao Ruijie it is difficult to find much factual information about Gong Bo before the incident of 2004. Like the other students he was from a poor family, his parents farmers who also ran a small business. However, whereas the others were all from the south of China, Gong Bo came from the more northern province of Shanxi. 
He grew up in Lao Dao Si Tang in Hanzhong City. Along with paying for his tuition fees, the family was struggling to keep up with payments on a number of medical bills for treatment for his grandparents. By 2004, Gong Bo had already received his master's degree. Ma Jiajue chose not to return home for the Spring Festival that year. Instead, he stayed in Yunnan to earn some money doing part-time work. What work he actually did isn't clear, but he would have been mostly alone on campus as during the holiday many places become ghost towns as people flood back home for the new year. However, for many students who have had their first taste of independence and have experienced what big cities have to offer, being back in their small villages with their families and extended families, things can quickly become boring. Many will choose to go back to campus earlier than they need to, so they can have a little more freedom and then hang out with people their own age. Shao Ruijie was one of those students that came back to the campus early. He would rejoin Ma Jiajue in dorm room 317. The two would be joined by Tang Xueli. Tang Xueli didn't usually stay on campus. He had a room he rented outside, but since only a handful of students had started coming back, there would be an empty bed in the room. He decided to take up the bed to save some money and hang out with Shao Ruijie and Ma Jiajue. Yang Kaihong and Gong Bo would also return to the campus around this time. There was still a few weeks before the start of the new semester. Yang Kaihong and Gong Bo would stay in their normal rooms. These days with laptops, modern smartphones, tablets, and a Wi-Fi connection, students have plenty to entertain them in their downtime. Twenty years ago things were different and they would find other ways to pass the time. One way they would do this is with a game of cards. It would be a simple game of cards that would end up with the murder of four students. Ma Jiajue and Shao Ruijie were involved in a game with some other students. Ma Jiajue was having a good run of luck, winning a number of hands. His best friend's fortune didn't sit well with Shao Ruijie. Out of frustration or anger Shao Ruijie called out Ma Jiajue for cheating, in front of the other students in the room. I can't believe you even cheated cards, it's because of your bad character Gong Bo didn't invite you to his birthday. Hearing these words coming from the person he considered his best friend would cut Ma Jiajue deeply. Already thinking that other students laughed at him or looked down on him, hearing these words would cause Ma Jiajue to believe his difficulties making friends was because of Shao Ruijie bad-mouthing him to others behind his back. In his mind Shao Ruijie was the reason many other students wanted nothing to do with him. He felt betrayed by the person he trusted the most. Unable to get the words out of his head and with no one to talk to, Ma Jiajue would decide that Shao Ruijie and Gong Bo would have to die. There was no moment of madness, no snapping. Ma Jiajue would plan his attacks. He searched the internet for the most efficient, effective method of killing someone that wouldn't leave much mess for him to clean up. He researched how to get a fake ID card for his escape. His choice of weapon would be a hammer. It would be quick, quiet and give his victims little chance to struggle. In the following days he would go to a market in the city to purchase a masonry hammer, black bin liners, duct tape and some padlocks. He asked the vendor to cut the handle of the hammer shorter so he would be able to conceal it easier and wield it at his victims better. He returned to campus ready to carry out his attacks. He hid the hammer and would wait until the next day before ending the life of Shao Ruijie. However there would be a reprieve. When Ma Jiajue went to get the hammer from its hiding place it had gone, Shao Ruijie would get one more day of life. The following day Ma Jiajue would return to the same vendor for a hammer to replace the stolen one. Again he would ask for the handle to be cut. This time he would keep the weapon close, not wanting any more delays. More students were returning to campus and he wanted to kill before there were too many people around. There was one problem he would have to deal with before he got to Shao Ruijie. Tang Xueli was still using a spare bed in the dorm room. Whereas Shao Ruijie often hung out with other students in their rooms, Tang Xueli preferred to stay in room 317 resting. It was rare for him to go out, he was an inconvenience to Ma Jiajue. If he was going to kill Shao Ruijie then Tang Xueli needed to be dealt with first. He attacked Tang Xueli with a hammer, while they were alone together in the room. Ma Jiajue hid the body in one of the room's lockers and cleaned up any evidence of the attack before waiting for Shao Ruijie to return. Ma Jiajue later told police that he never had any issues with Tang Xueli, he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. He went on to say that if it was anyone else in the room, the end result would have been the same. Shao Ruijie didn't return.
returned to the dorm room that night. He slept in the room of the people he was hanging out with, something he did often when he stayed up late. Ma Jiajue would have to wait until the next evening. Shao Ruijie came back late the next night, totally unaware that the body of Tang Xueli was in one of the lockers. While Shao Ruijie was washing his feet before bed, Ma Jiajue would attack, killing his best friend. Shao Ruijie would follow Tang Xueli into the lockers and Ma Jiajue cleaned up any mess left behind. There was one more target. Gong Bo. The following afternoon Yang Kaihong was searching for more players for a game of cards. He came to room 317 looking for Shao Ruijie. Entering the room he saw Ma Jiajue cleaning. Yang Kaihong asked if he had seen Shao Ruijie. Ma Jiajue told him he could wait in the room for Shao Ruijie to come back. Not wanting a potential witness to his crimes, Ma Jiajue killed Yang Kaihong as he waited on one of the bunks. Yang Kaihong went into the lockers. Ma Jiajue didn't want to take any more chances of his crimes being discovered or any more interruptions before he got the chance to kill Gong Bo. This time he wouldn't wait around. Once he had finished cleaning up after Yang Kaihong, he would go on the hunt. He would head to the dorm room of Gong Bo and, unfortunately, found him there. Ma Jiajue told him there was a game of cards going on in his room, but they were a player short and asked if Gong Bo was interested. Gong Bo agreed to join the game and headed to the room. Ma Jiajue walked behind him as they made their way to room 317. Once inside Ma Jiajue attacked and killed Gong Bo once the door closed behind them. Gong Bo became the fourth occupant of the lockers in room 317. Each locker would be padlocked and taped closed. The heads of each victim covered with bin liners to collect any blood and stop it leaking out. Ma Jiajue stayed in the room for the next few hours with the four bodies hidden away in the lockers trying to clean up any remaining traces of the attacks. He had taken any cash and bank cards the victims had on them before he hit each body. Some of the victims had cell phones which Ma Jiajue disposed of in a nearby lake. His delay in leaving the campus after the murder of Gong Bo would almost cause a fifth student to be killed. The memory of one simple act of kindness in the past would be enough for Ma Jiajue to spare the life of another of his roommates. Lin Feng was a dorm mate of Ma Jiajue and Shao Ruijie, but much like Tang Xueli, he lived off campus in a private room. He didn't go back to room 317 often. In a case of poor timing, Lin Feng went back to the room that evening to collect some of his things. He bumped into Ma Jiajue, who was on the verge of leaving. Lin Feng didn't consider himself to be close to Ma Jiajue. He would later describe their relationship as polite, but he wouldn't call Ma Jiajue a friend. Fearful of his crimes being discovered, Ma Jiajue was fully prepared to make Lin Feng the next occupant of the lockers. However, for some reason he would think, back to a time he was sick in the dorm room, he would let Lin Feng go. At that time Ma Jiajue was so ill in the dorm room he felt too weak to leave his bed. It would be Lin Feng who would bring him some food to eat during this time. Because of this Ma Jiajue stopped himself from killing a fifth time. He would get Lin Feng to leave, before he could notice anything out of the ordinary. Lin Feng had no idea how close he had come to death. He would later talk about Ma Jiajue to the media, saying, if you are good to him, he will be good to you. However, if you are bad to him, he will despise you for that. Once Lin Feng had gone, Ma Jiajue padlocked the door of room 317 and left the campus. He would soon have most of the country looking for him. As the semester hadn't started, the absence of five students wasn't a reason for concern. Most would think the students had not yet returned from their hometowns. However, an order coming from room 317 had been noticed and it had slowly been getting stronger. It was thought to be down to dead rats in the room. Eventually some students would complain to the dormitory warden who would go to the room to investigate. He had to break in, because of the padlock Ma Jiajue had put on the door, before leaving. Once inside the smell was much stronger and there was a brownish liquid pooled on the floor by the lockers. The warden called a campus security guard to help him open up the lockers. Nothing could have prepared them for the shocking sight that would greet them. The police were called and started to investigate the scene. It wouldn't take long for them to name the missing Ma Jiajue as their primary suspect. A warrant was issued nationwide for his arrest and a reward of 200,000 RMB, about $30,000, was offered for information leading to it. The face and physical description of Ma Jiajue would be up on posters all over the country. But the police focused on the nearby provinces Guangdong, Hunan, Hainan and Guangxi. It was the correct choice. After fleeing the campus Ma Jiajue went into the city and headed to Kunming Railway Station. There he tried to buy a ticket to Guangzhou with a fake ID. 
reports vary on how he got it. Some say he bought it, others report that he made it himself. However he got it, it was spotted quickly by officials at the station and they initially didn't allow him to purchase the ticket. Ma Jiajue told them he had lost his real ID. He was just a student trying to get home, to get a new one. The station officials would be sympathetic to the problem and allowed him to board the train to Guangzhou. On arriving in Guangzhou, Ma Jiajue decided he didn't want to take any more chances on getting trains. He bought a bus ticket to Sanya, in the province of Hainan. The search for the demon of Yunnan was underway. The police had traced his movements as far as Guangzhou, but given the bodies hadn't been discovered until eight days after he left Kunming, they were playing catch-up. Looking for the needle of one person in the quite sizable haystack of over one billion was a huge task. Unlike trains, passengers didn't need to show ID to buy bus tickets. And the one bank card he had tried to use had been swallowed by the ATM. The police turned to his family for help. His parents could not believe their intelligent, sensible, well-behaved son could be guilty of these horrific crimes. They made an appeal on television for Ma Jiajue to turn himself in so everything could be sorted out. Their pleas would be ignored and the search would continue. The island province of Hainan is considered by many to be one of China's gold ticket tourist destinations. What was once home to military bases is now best known for its golden sand beaches. Just like the time he ran away in high school he had gone to a place where he thought he would be able to see the sea. Ma Jiajue had it there thinking it would be far away enough for people not to know about his crimes in Yunnan. He was wrong, his face was plastered on posters all over the city. Too scared to get a hotel room, look for work or go into restaurants fearing people would recognize him, Ma Jiajue ended up living on the streets. He wore dirty torn clothes and a thick covering of dirt on his face did enough to disguise him to most people. His only food was what he could scavenge from trash cans around the city. One month to the day of the murders of Yang Kaihong and Gong Bo, a motorcycle taxi driver got in contact with the local police station. He informed them he had seen a vagrant that he thought looked like the wanted man on posters all over the city. The police quickly arrived at the scene to find a dirty, scruffy beggar picking half-eaten or stale steam buns out of a trash can. The officer approached the beggar to get a closer look at him and asked the man to identify himself. The beggar did not respond and tried to move away from the scene. The officer stopped him and asked again to see some identification. Again the beggar would try to get away. The officer got a closer look at the beggar, trying to look past the dirt caking the man's face. He saw a resemblance but wasn't sure, but since the beggar had refused to give them a name, he was arrested and taken to the station. Arriving at the police station, Knowing he was caught, the beggar came clean telling the police. I am Ma Jiajue. The police gave him some food, the best food he had eaten since leaving Yunnan and would interview him. Ma Jiajue gave them the full story of what he had done. When the police searched the few possessions he had, they found a cassette recorder and several blank tapes and language study tapes. Ma Jiajue had used one of the blank tapes to record a confession of his crimes and another to leave a message to his family. In the confession on the tape and in all the interviews he had with police, Ma Jiajue maintained that he wanted to kill Shao Ruijie and Gong Bo because of the words said at the card game. After his interview in Hainan, the police got him ready to be returned to Kunming. He was given some fresh, clean clothes which Ma Jiajue would say were the best clothes he had worn in his life. The motorcycle taxi driver would receive the 200,000 RMB reward. The moment shown on news programs around the country, he would also be interviewed by a number of TV stations. The following day Ma Jiajue was transported back to Kunming under heavy armed guard to be interrogated further by police in Yunnan. His plane touched down in the early hours of March 17th. The media waiting to try and get images of the killer student. What is known about the case is only what was released to the public by the police. Much of what he said when talking to detectives and a police psychologist was put under a gagging order. This was for the benefit of the Ma family. The concept of mianzi or face is an important part of Chinese culture. The idea of not allowing people to lose their dignity. Some of the information he gave to police and the psychologist would be kept private so that the family didn't lose any more face because of the actions of their son. However, two letters he wrote in custody would be released. One was written to the uncle he had turned to advice for in the past. Ma Jiajue would express remorse for the damage he had done to the family and the families of his victims. But there was little sign of remorse for Tang Xueli, Yang Kaihong, Gong Bo, and Shao Ruijie. In the letter, he would instruct his uncle to inform his parents to forget about him. 
He said he had changed too much and was no longer the person he used to be. They should stop paying attention to him and he didn't want them to collect his ashes. In the second letter he would talk about the regret he felt for killing the four students over such a trivial matter. And how at the time all he could feel was hatred towards the people that hurt him. Just over a month after his arrest and two months after his crimes, Ma Jiajue appeared in court. With the evidence and the confessions he gave there was no doubt about his guilt. The only question would be the severity of his punishment. Along with being charged with intentional homicide, he was also facing a civil suit which would require him to pay compensation to the families of each of his victims. Death or a life sentence were the only options for him. Despite telling his family to forget him, some would come to the proceedings to see him for the last time. The families of his victims would also be in the court and made it clear how they felt about the killer of their sons. Throughout the sentencing the reason Ma Jiajue gave for his crimes would remain consistent. Never deviating from the confessions he made on tape and gave to the police. His defense team argued that, since he admitted his guilt after his capture and had shown remorse for his crimes, then the court should show leniency. They were unable to sway the judges. And Ma Jiajue was sentenced to death. Ma Jiajue would not appeal his sentence. The compensation awarded to the victim's families would have to be paid by his family. Just four months after murdering four students, one Ma Jiajue, Tang Xueli, Yang Kaihong, Gong Bo and Shao Ruijie should have been celebrating their graduation with friends and family. Ma Jiajue was instead on his knees in a field, his hands tied behind his back. At 23 years of age Ma Jiajue was executed by gunshot to the back of his head. His parents didn't collect his ashes, not because their son asked them not to do so, but because his father felt it would be too humiliating. If they didn't have their son there was no point in taking the remains. The family were also left trying to pay of the compensation to the families of his victims. Each family were awarded 20,000 RMB, only the family of Gong Bo refused the money. They just wanted to forget the whole incident. Eventually one of his sisters would collect the remains and chose to spread them into the sea. A place that seemed to have a special attraction for him. Throughout the reporting of the case and still today, few people have been able to accept that Ma Jiajue could have reacted so violently to a few insults over a game of cards. Because of this and the fact that some of what he would say in interviews was held back from the public, there has been a lot of speculation, rumor, and gossip. In this video I have tried to stick to the facts as much as possible in the details of the case. Ma Jiajue would give one interview that would be made public. It was with the Chinese newspaper The China Youth Daily, given not long before his execution. In the interview he would talk about how he lost his ideals in middle school. He didn't offer any explanation for this, he didn't seem to know why this happened. He would also describe not having much respect for life. Not valuing that of his own, or other people. When asked if it was really just a few harsh words said over a game of cards that caused him to react so violently. He suggested that more things were said to him which attacked his character. He would describe his feelings when he arrived in Hainan. Still angry, he thought about buying a knife so he could hack at people in the streets. The only thing that stopped him was thinking how much more it would hurt his family. His time at university seemed to have given him a low opinion on his peers. He was very critical of their lack of ambitions and reasons for studying, feeling that many were only going through the motions to get a qualification which would lead to a job once they graduated. The question of psychological counseling was brought up. These days in China attitudes towards mental health issues has improved but there is still work to do. 20 years ago mental health issues, 
particularly those affecting students, were largely ignored. Ma Jiajue felt things would have been very different if he had psychological counseling, or just had someone who would listen to him. Whether or not that would have been the case is something we will never know. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting. I hope to make more videos covering crimes and unusual cases from across China in the future. Stories that few people outside the country will be familiar with.